Sure. I'm Dr. Koushik Lahiri, a professor and senior consultant dermatologist from Apollo Multispecialty Hospital, Kolkata, and also the honorary medical director of Wisdom, Kolkata. We are here today on behalf of Fars Auxiliar Academy to discuss about the specialty MSAB part one, and I'm here for the dermatology part. So before we go to the subject proper, let us uh, just as an overview slide, uh, let us first discuss what exactly MSA part one is. It is entry level examination accessible to doctors with a minimum of 12 months postgraduate experience in medical employment. It covers a broad range of topics to ensure the level of knowledge is appropriate to physicians at the beginning to, of postgraduate training. The purpose of part one to, is to test knowledge and understanding of common and important disorders as outlined in the UK curriculum, as well as clinical science, knowledge and understanding of UK national guidelines is also required. Success in the part one indicates that you not only retain the knowledge acquired during the undergraduate training, but that your knowledge of medicine has expanded and kept pace with the development that have occurred since graduation and continues to provide an appropriate basis for clinical decision making. So what are the highlights of uh, part one? It's a an one day exam, two to three hour paper, 100 multiple choice question, usually five best of five questions, and you'll get eight from dermatology. Usually there's no images, but today we'll discuss uh, image based uh, cases because dermatology is a uh, image based science and uh, set an examination hall on online. Similarly, part two is a written examination and uh, taken by physician in training who have passed the MSP UK part one examination. It builds on the knowledge uh, assessed in part one and tests the acquisition of a representative sample of medical knowledge, skills and behavior as specified in the UK specialty training curriculum for core medical training, a curriculum for internal medicine. So just like part one, if I have an exam at a glance, you have two papers taken in one day, papers last three hours and 100 multiple charge question again, best of five. And here you will get nine from dermatology. Uh, in part one, you have eight and questions include images. And it is again sat in an examination hall. So let's see what we have in case one. Here we have a 25 year old man of darker complexion presented to his gel practitioner with patchy rash involving the upper chest. On examination, pale, finely scaly, large patch actually patches was seen on his chest, upper back. And what is the most likely causative organism of the disease he is suffering from? Is it Candida albicans? Is it Hopper simplex virus? Streptococcus pyogenes? Staphylococcus aureus or Malassezia fofa? Let us see the clinical cases. As I've told you, it's a darker skinned uh, individual, young man. And this hypopigmented lesions are there on the upper chest and the front and back. What is the explanation and analysis? The answer is, as you can see, it is there on the top of your screen, E, Malassezia fofa. The man has the typical rash of tinea versicolor. We used to call it Petrus's versicolor a few days, years back. Now it is tinea versicolor that is caused by Malassezia fofa, Malassezia Sympatialis and more commonly, Malassezia globosa. The hypopigmentation can be attributed to production of azelaic acid by the organism, which is a tyrosinous kinase innovator and inhibits melanin production at the affected site locally and is usually found in immunocompromised individuals, for which the patient should be adequately screened for an immunodeficient status. Petriasis is further confirmed via Wood's lamp examination, but in skin of this type, the skin of color, what we call, uh, 
Oots lamp may not be needed. Clinically, you can you can diagnose uh, the eoloisha apple green fluorescence that you get in in uh, pale skin in in uh, and uh, like a Caucasian patients and like a ten percent KOH mount microscopy which shows a spaghetti midball appearance, representing with fungal hyphae and spores respectively. Candida albicans uh, tend to cause intertrigo, not on this area affecting oral and genital areas. Absolutely nothing to do with herpes simplex virus. Type 1 causes mucocutaneous lesions on the face and lips and type 2 in, in the genital areas. And the Staphylococcus aureus causes folliculitis, impetigo, scalded skin syndrome, and toxic shock syndrome. Streptococcus pyogenes can cause cellulitis, erysipelas, impetigo, necrotizing fasciitis, erythema marginatum, and scarlet fever. It is also one of the most common causes of erythema nodosum and can cause exacerbate the gutted psoriasis.